So this is the last section in the chapter on vector valued functions. Um, it's mostly on curvature, but we begin with this discussion of what's known as the arc length parameter. Um, now, the idea here is, and we've seen this in some examples, that you might have some vector valued function and you graph the vector valued function and it gives you a curve of some point, right? So this is the graph of say R of T. Um, but depending on how you parameterize the curve, right? And, and there can be many, you know, different parameterizations that produce the same curve, right? So there, uh, or in other words, there can be different vector valued functions that produce the same graph. Um, and one of the things that is often useful to do is to reparameterize a curve. Um, so often what happens is you take your, your variable t and you substitute for some other variable, right? And so typically what happens is t will be written in terms of some, you know, usually increasing differentiable function of some other variable, right? So t will be some like f of u. Um, and, and if you think about, you know, like the, you know, if I, if I defined some, you know, I don't know, let's say um, R of, of S to be, you know, R of, say, F of T. We'll do it this way around uh, F of S, right? Let's do it that way. F of S. And so maybe this is actually T, let's say, right? Um, and, and maybe we should call this like, you know, here's the original, and, you know, could be a different function, right? Uh, but when you, when you calculate the, the derivative of this, right, chain rule says that you're going to get r1 prime at f of s and then multiply by f prime, right? You get this f prime scalar multiple. And so if we think of these derivatives as, let's say, velocity, for example, right, um, then the two are, are parallel, but the magnitude is different. And so what that means is that you, you travel the same curve, but you know, in different ways. Um, one parameterization might have you sort of starting slowly and speeding up as you go. Another parameterization might have you just moving at a constant speed the whole way through. Others, you might speed up and then slow down and then speed up and, you know, there's, there are many possibilities depending on the, the type of parameterization that you use. Um, so the, the arc length parameterization, um, what we do is, you know, we usually think of like the parameters like time, right? Whereas arc length is like distance. Um, and so the idea is to kind of equate the two, right? You want to, you want to use the arc length as your parameter. And, and so, you know, you start at some initial point, you know, and if you don't go anywhere, well, then your arc length is, say, you know, zero, right? This is maybe A, and, and over here we're going to end at some point B, right? And then, and then you kind of, well, maybe it's S equals A, I guess, right? Um, but, you know, well, let's say, let's say it's zero. Just to kind of simplify, it's our starting point, right? And then, and then you kind of move one step, S equals one s equals 2, s equals 3, and so on. So you just kind of, you know, you're moving at kind of steady steps, right? Whereas it, it might very well be that for a different parameterization, right, um, when you go from t equals 0 to t equals 1, you've gone a distance of 5 or something, right? Um, so we, the goal here is going to be to define a parameterization that essentially has us moving at constant speed as we travel the curve. And we're going to see that the arc length parameter is going to do exactly that. Um, first, we need to define it, then we'll look at an example, and then we'll, we'll confirm that it has these properties we want it to have, right? Um, and so the idea is, you know, we know that arc length, right, uh, typically, you know, if, if, we have, if we have R of t and it's given on some, you know, say t is from, say, uh, a to b, right? So that s equals zero, it might correspond to, say, t equals a. Right. Well, what we can do is we, you know, so if we wanted the entire arc length, we'd say, okay, well, it's the integral from a to b, and we integrate r prime of t dt, right? And that would give me the length of the curve from, uh, you know, t equals um, a going all the way to t equals b, right? But what we want to do is we want to, you know, get a, get a variable out of this. We want to get a function. And so what we can do is... We just 
do that, right? From A to T, right? Fundamental theorem of calculus says we can use integration to define a new function, right? So then this does give me this new function, S. It's a function of T, right? But we're going to use S as a, a parameter in its own right, right? Um, similar idea to here. Here I define T as a function of S, but we can also, you know, go the other way. You define S as a function of T. Um, and, and so, of course, the, the derivative of, of S, which we might need, well, um, oh, and I guess I should, uh, you yeah. know, if we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, we should use it properly, right? Um, our integration variable should not match that variable up there. Um, and then S prime of T, well, that's just going to be, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that'll be the magnitude of, of R prime. Um, so that's going to come in handy for us um, later on. We don't need it just yet. Uh, first, we're going to pause, we're going to do an example, and then we're going to dig a little bit more into what's going on with this arc length parameter.